oh hello I thought I'd update to you uh, on some progress on a private experiment of mine um, I recently got back into watching The Great Pottery Throwdown and that always makes me want to play around with clay normally I use air dried clay um, from any craft store usually the works to be honest um, to make things which has its drawbacks because they're quite fragile even when they're dry and um, oh like a cat Anywho, um, they're not like water resistant in any way, but this time I decided I'm going to use real clay, so I got hold of some. Uh, I don't have a kiln, more on that in a moment. Uh, the clay I chose um, was available on eBay and it is grogged clay, so it has little bits of grog in it, which is clay that has already been fired once, uh, which is why you can see these like large white chunks in it. But this clay is meant to be good for raku firing, which is um, a thing that they do in Japan. I don't know a lot about it, but it basically involves um, making your pots, not in a kiln, but in a fire. And I recently watched an episode on pit firing on the Pottery Throwdown, and then googled to see if this could be done at home, and it can. You can do it in a barbecue which is amazing. So I've been gathering scrap wood uh, from around the place. I've unearthed half a bag of barbecue charcoal and uh, we're going to try and fire some pots. So this is one I made a couple of days ago. Uh, they have to dry before they get fired. I don't have a wheel so they're going to look a little bit crooked. Uh, this one I made yesterday so it's still a little bit on the soft side. Again a little bit crooked but these are just test pots really to see if the method works. I got a little bit inspired on this one and made like a little goddess. Uh, the legs are basically just a kind of sausage bent round and then, and then a ball with a, a hollow in it for the stomach. I've added these little arms and a head and I've smoothed this all over with this rock uh, which uh, has been in my rock polisher. Uh, just dipped in water and then rubbed on the surface when the pot was slightly dried, a uh, sort of a tacky stage, um, which makes it kind of smoother, not as smooth as it could be, but they're going to get sanded with some sandpaper outside before I pop them in the fire. So this is pretty exciting. Um, it will be nice to have something, if this is successful, which is made with all of the elements uh, working together, as well as working with uh, wood, uh, most of it's like salvage wood, there was a, a broken wooden fence outside that the council had never come and taken away so um, that's been cut up now, we're using that and some wood, some just sort of fallen logs from where they've just trimmed all the hedges around our way so basically just rescued some of that and uh, going to use that to make fire. I have read, because uh, I'm one of those people who just kind of looks up everything around a topic they're interested in. You can make your own clay from dirt, um, just from, ex well, more accurately extract clay that's already in the dirt from it. And we're in quite a clay rich area, so if this works out I might go ahead and try and make my own clay and then fire it in my own barbecue kiln, um, which will be very exciting. So I thought I'd share that with you guys and uh, we'll see if any of these things survive my first attempt at pit firing at home. So, bear with. Well hello everybody, it's me again and uh, the great clay experiment is at its conclusion. Yesterday I did a little bit of firing in the barbecue which you can see down there. Uh, it was a bit wet out so now the grass around it is fairly trampled. Um, it took a long time, I think I started about 10am and then just left it to finish off overnight, so a long ass time. And basically I, I put them in at one end of, of the long barbecue and then had the fire going at the other end. And then every 40 minutes I moved them slightly closer, turned them around, turned them upside down. And then finally, I think after about five different um, goes around, uh, just putting a little bit more wood on the fire, moving them a bit closer, it was finally time to bury them actually in the in the fire under another layer of charcoal for um, just the rest of the day. I then put some more wood on the fire just to keep it going so they were probably buried in there burning for about four hours before the fire went out 
And this morning I have recovered them, I have scrubbed them with a, uh, a nail brush, and uh, we can see that they have become pottery. Um, they're no longer clay. I obviously just scrubbed these and they haven't become wet or um, broken down like just raw clay would. Um, also, they can hold water. They will absorb it because obviously it's still porous, it's not glazed, but they can hold the water and, and did so for, you know, as long as I was holding it, it didn't disappear or anything. So that's pretty cool. They've also gone black. Um, when I had them in there, they started to turn yet like yellowish brown, I think from the smoke. And then as they got closer to the fire, they became blacker. You can see this is my like least favorite because it's just not a nice shape. But um, you can see how it's become sort of black in places, white in other places where it's been less smoke damaged. That's quite cool. I might try next time putting different things on them to try and make different colours as it burns. This one's nice. I might use this one for salt on my altar. Kind of looks like um, black basalt or something. Um, it's mostly black. But I like it. It's got these white specks in it because that's like the grogged clay. I think that helped enormously because the one video that I watched of someone doing it in a barbecue, uh, his all broke and cracked. Uh, I'll link that below. But um, I think because this one was grogged and because I'd left it to dry out for like six or seven days it was really quite stable none of it cracked i was wearing goggles in case anything exploded but we were quite fortunate this one has some really interesting colors on it this is my little um goddess figure um it was actually quite easy to make not as smooth as i would have liked but there we go but we've got some black on here we've also got some like browns like yellowish colors on the the head and arms the back is mostly white, but it's got these sort of like rust coloured spots on it, which is quite interesting. Uh, and that's also like, I can't make it do the thing when I'm not holding out, but you can hear that those are now pottery. So that's quite cool. This little lady is probably my favourite one to come out of the experiment. I have plenty of clay left, so I'm going to do this again. And uh, it was actually quite easy. Uh, with the wood and some barbecue charcoal just to keep the fire going. I had some barbecue tongs for moving stuff around. I had my um, goggles, which were just like hedge strimming goggles to protect you from like flying stones. Um, so you don't really need a huge amount of equipment to just make this happen. So it's a pretty good project. I've enjoyed myself immensely. And um, if you'd like a, like a more extensive how-to of, of how this came about, uh, I might do that with the next piece, so like this video and um, I'll see about doing that. But in the meantime, I'm going to refine my sculpturing skills and try and make a few more bits to cook in the old barbecue. Because I'm pretty jazzed about these. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.